Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Antonio Nakitolfirovich, I am a software developer and in this video I'm going to be showing you a product that myself and my team have made called QueryStorm. So QueryStorm is an add-on for Excel that lets you use uh, SQL, c -sharp, and VBNet inside Excel. It has an IDE component, a runtime component and an app store. Let me show you what it can do. So there are three basic things you can do with QueryStorm. The first one is processing data, second one is automating workbooks, and the third one is building and sharing custom functions. So let's start with processing data. Over here, I have some sample data that I downloaded from Kaggle. It's a list of movies, and for each movie, we have a title, a list of genres that the movie belongs to, a director, ratings, and, and whatnot. So in order to process this data, the first thing we need to do is convert it into a table. So I'm going to press Control T, and once it's a table, we can uh, go over to QueryStorm, start a new uh, C-sharp script, and start querying this data. Right off the bat, the first thing we can do with the C-sharp support is we can run link queries against uh, anything that's marked as a table inside Excel. So let's see if we can find all of the movies with a rating that's less than, let's say, two. Table one, where m for movie, m dot rating is less than, let's say, two. Okay, press F5. Okay, we just have one. We can double click it and it takes us to, to the movie. In the results grid, we have all of the columns that are present in the uh, original table. And we also have an additional uh, metadata column called underscore underscore address, which tells us where the row is in uh, Excel. We can change this to, let's say three, so we get more movies. And uh, well, actually there's not that many terrible movies. Let's do less than four. Okay, there's a, there's, there's a few more there. This is just a basic query. We could do something like this very easily with the Excel's native functionality alone. But with C-sharp, we can do more advanced things. So one thing that would be quite difficult to do with the just native functionality alone would be to analyze this uh, data set based on genres. The reason for that being that uh, all of the genres for, uh, for a particular movie are bunched into the same uh, column. So basically what we would do is we would uh, break up uh, all of these rows uh, into multiple rows, one for each genre that the movie belongs to, and then we can aggregate on top of that. Before we do that, we should change the name of the uh, table to, let's say, movies. So as soon as we do that, the, our old variable disappears and we get the movies variable where we can uh, write our queries. So basically what we want to do is for each row, we want to break it up into many rows. So instead of, um, so for each movie, we want to take the genre column and uh, split it up uh, based on the comma. So if we run this, we're just going to get uh, a bunch of rows. For example, for Guardians of the Galaxy, we're going to get action, adventure, sci-fi, which are, which are these three. We can project here uh, also uh, the genre and the movie title, just so that we are clear on what we're doing. So let's select, uh, we're projecting the genre, taking the genre and projecting the genre and uh, the movie uh, title itself. So if we run this right now, we can see that um, we have indeed split Guardians of the Galaxy into uh, three, three rows and then Prometheus into three rows as well because it belongs to three genres and so on. And we can now uh, take, this, uh, take this result and start aggregating based on, aggregating on top of it. So we can do uh, group by, take this uh, uh, object and group it by genres and we can project out for each genre uh, the, the genre uh, name, which is the key. And we can also project the number of, uh, number of uh, titles for each genre. So that's going to be uh, g.count. And we can also project the uh, average ratings for, uh, for the movie. So that's going to be average rating equals g dot average. And then we can do uh, x dot. And instead of uh, using title here, we're just going to return the movie row itself. And we'll just uh, pass in the rating, the movie dot rating over here. So if I press F5 now, 
we can see that the exact numbers for each uh, genre. So we have for each genre, we have the number of movies that belong to it and the average rating. And we can now write, write this result use, uh, by pressing Alt Insert. And we can then uh, uh, close the IDE and apply uh, some, I don't know, formatting or whatnot. Just so we can, uh, just so we get a, a, a better visual sense of the of the data. This is useful for one-off processing of uh, data. But what if we wanted to make this uh, automatic, so we can process the data without even using the IDE? That brings us to our se second topic, which is setting up uh, automation using C#. -sharp. So let's get back to the IDE. And uh, for a start, if we save this, this uh, script and go into code, we'll notice that uh, the script is saved in the script folder in the projects, project node over here. For the purposes of automation, we're not going to be using a script, so I'm just going to copy this code, close the script, and I'm also going to take this project and delete it. The uh, files in this project have been scaffolded by QueryStorm. That's been done automatically, so I'm just going to delete this project just so that uh, we're starting off from a clean slate. And I'm going to right click on the, uh, this workbook node and create a new project. Now, QueryStorm has scaffolded two items for us, the AppCS class, which is the entry point to the application, and the project config file, which basically lets us configure the project. So we can uh, supply metadata that describes the project itself. We can also the, provide uh, references to .NET DLLs that are being used and to NuGet packages uh, that we're using over here. So let's close this. So to set up automation, we need components. A component is basically a class that controls any part of the workbook. It can control the entire workbook or it can control any arbitrarily defined section of the workbook. So you can have many components, uh, each controlling their own part of the workbook, or you can have one component controlling the entire workbook. So let's define a component. We'll just leave it uh, as component one. So as you can see, a component is basically just a class that derives from component base. The query storm scaffolding has generated uh, over here a bunch of code for us. I'm just going to get rid of all of this code from here, and I'm just going to uh, leave this event handler over here. Let's get rid of the usings as well. And in the message box, I'm just going to show uh, hello world. So this event handler is intended to control, uh, to react to events from the workbook. In order to send, to invoke it, we need to send um, an event that's called sheet one, command button one. This is an event that we can uh, send from uh, an active exp uh, named uh, command button one, located in sheet one. So the default command button, if we go to properties, is named command button one. And since it's uh, placed in sheet one, that's going to fire the, the exact uh, event we need. If we wanted to rename this button, we would just change this event handler uh, over here. So let's see if it works. First thing we need to do is build this project. And once we do, we can go to the developer tab, exit the design mode and click the button. Sure enough, we get hello world. And just to show that this is exactly what's being uh, invoked, all I'm going to uh, change this to hello world 2, build a project and click the button and it's showing us hello world 2. Okay, so let's get rid of this uh, message box and let's now paste in the uh, code that we've had from, the, uh, from our C-sharp script. The code is more or less fine as it is, but we don't have access to the movies uh, table. C-sharp scripts in QueryStorm have access to uh, all of the tables and all of the variables implicitly. But in components, we need to be more explicit about uh, what data is coming in and what data is going out. So to get access to the movies table, we need a property and we need to uh, data bind it to the table in Excel. Here's how to do that. So let's define a new property. We're binding to uh, the movies table. We already have a type prepared for it. And the uh, name of the property is going to be movies. In order to bind uh, this, um, this property to the table from Excel, I'm going to use the bind table attribute and specify that this is referring to the table uh, movies with the lowercase m. And we'll just use the property over here. And just to make sure that this is in fact working, I'm just going to log the results over here. So I'm going to um, store the results in a variable. And I'm going to 
log the count of the of the row that we get. So let's build the project again. Click the button, and sure enough, we get 20. We should have 20 genres over here. So this is row four, and down to row 23, which is uh, 20 rows. So let's see if we can take this um, the, the data and write it into this uh, table. So first off, let's get rid of the data that we've had uh, from before. And let's see if we can uh, write these results into this table. In order to access this table, we are going to need another property. So we can define another property. The name of this um, type, it basically depends on the name of this table. So we haven't given this table a name. Uh, it's just table two. Let's rename it to results. Once I rename it to results, we should have here uh, a results table type. Now, you might be wondering where this type came from. It's basically auto-generated by QueryStorm. So if we take a look at the lib folder over here, as soon as I, uh, let's say if I uh, add a new table over here, the current type is context types A2, A3, blah, 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 DLL. If I create a new table, it generates a new uh, DLL uh, that has a different uh, ID over here, and it, uh, and it contains the new types. If I change the name of the column to something, it's going to create a new uh, DLL and give us the new types in the new DLL. So let's get rid of this, uh, this table and uh, continue about our way. So uh, in order to access this data, we said, uh, okay, we're accessing the results table. We need to bind to it. So bind table, the table name is results. So we should have access to the results table. And basically what we want to do is we want to take these results and just write them into this table. So uh, let's do, let's access the results table. The first thing to do would be to clear any previous uh, results because we might, have, we, we might have had some previous results over here. And the next thing is to just go through each item in the results and just copy them into the results table. So we can do that by uh, this way. Okay, uh, new row equals results, the results table, we call the add row method. And then we'll just copy the properties one by one. So new row dot genre equals r dot genre new row new. Ah, okay, we need this new uh, row dot uh, count equals r dot count and new row dot average rating equals r dot average rating. So the last thing to do is call results.save changes. We have to call results.save changes because these changes are all in memory until we call save changes. Writing to Excel takes a long time, so, so it's best to batch all of the data processing, uh, do it in memory, and then as a last step, just call save changes. So once we're happy with that, we can build the project. Click command button one, and sure enough, it populates the, populates the data. Let's say uh, we also wanted to have uh, to define some parameters that we're uh, loading from the from the worksheet. So let's say we only want to uh, display genres that have a minimum number of uh, movies inside them. So let's add a, a cell here called main count. So that's just a label. We're going to use this cell over here. So cell styles input. Let's put 100 over here, and we should uh, add a name to this cell. So that's going to be min count cell. In order to use this in our components, we can do, we need to define a property, which is integer, and we can call it min count. We're binding this property to the min count cell. And once we do that, we can use the property in the, in the component where m dot count. It's basically not. It's it's not m. It's g for genre is greater than min count, greater than or equal to min count. So press Control Shift P to build. Click the button. Close the IDE just so that we're just so that we were 
we're not hiding uh, any rows behind it. So if we, uh, if we change this to 50 and click the button, we're getting a few more. If we put one and click the button, we get all of them. If we, click, if we put 300, we should get only a few. So action and drama, okay. And if we wanted to make this automatic so that as soon as we change this, the table updates, we could do that as well. Changing of the, uh, of the cell also uh, uh, includes firing of an event. So uh, we'll just use the event that gets fired is the, uh, the event, uh, uh, is the name of the, uh, the cell. So we can put that over here, build. And now as soon as we change the number over here, the table below updates. So there we go. So basically what we're doing here is combining the workbook as a document with business logic written in uh, C Sharp. And this business logic can be as, uh, as complex as we need it to be. And we can even use uh, NuGet packages if we, if we want to. So to uh, access NuGet packages, we can right click the project node, click on manage packages, go to NuGet packages, and just download any NuGet package that we need uh, to use in our, um, in our uh, workbook application. So once you build this automation into the Excel workbook, it becomes part of the workbook and it's distributed inside the workbook. The only thing that uh, users need to have is they need to have the QueryStorm runtime installed, which is a four megabyte installer. It doesn't have any additional licensing. So you don't have to worry about running into another paywall. And the last thing I wanted to show you is uh, building and sharing custom Excel functions. Basically, what it allows you to do is you can write uh, functions in C Sharp, you can publish them to a network share or, a, or the cloud, and then have your colleagues and users to install your functions inside Excel. It makes it very easy for uh, developers to help the non-technical users around them. So let's see how that works. Let's close this, uh, this workbook. We're not going to save it. Just going to make a new one. Let's open up the IDE. So again, we can create uh, a new project in the workbook or we can define a project at the machine level. Both projects can contain uh, functions. For uh, the purposes of this video, I'm going to create a new extension project over here. I'm just going to call it ABC functions. Okay just to keep it at the, the top. I'm going to delete this one. This is an example one. And I'm going to open up the project. As before, we can see that we have a um, app class over here, which is the entry point of the application. We have a scaffolded class over here, which we can use to start writing business logic. I'm not going to use this one, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And we also have a project config file over here with the metadata and uh, project settings. I'm going to close that one because I don't need to do anything with that at the moment. And to define functions, we are going to need a Excel functions class. And the default scaffolding gives us a class which uh, already defines a, a function decorated with an Excel function attribute. So as soon as we build this, we are going to get um, the add, uh, add method inside Excel. So if I call this right now, I have a new uh, add function. I can pass in the numbers and it uh, adds. Just to uh, demonstrate that this is what's being executed, I'm just going to change it, build it. And as we can see, we now get uh, A plus B plus 100 as the result. We can do more interesting stuff here. So let's say uh, we wanted to, uh, instead of adding two numbers, we want to uh, take in a number and return uh, the textual representation of that number. So there's a NuGet library for that. It's called Humanizer. So let's get uh, that from NuGet. So Humanizer. Uh, okay, Humanizer core, that one is going to do nicely for us. Once we have the function, the, uh, the package, we're going to get extension methods for, uh, for the integer type. So we are going to get the two words method, uh, which uh, to get the method, we need to add the using statement, which we can uh, do using the code fixer. 
and we're also not returning an integer, we're returning a string. So once we change all of that, we, we can also change the, the name of the method. So uh, let's do uh, convert to words once we build this. So as soon as we built this, the, this method uh, disappeared, and but we also uh, have a new method here that's called convert to words, which accepts a single integer and returns the textual representation of these uh, of these words. And we can do all sorts of functions here. So let's say we want to um, define a function that uh, takes in uh, some text and gives us um, a list of words that are included in the text. So we can do that by uh, doing, creating a new function called, uh, that's going to return an I enumerable string, get words, accept some text, and it's going to return, and it's going to use uh, regular expressions to break it up into words. So we can do uh, regex dot matches, pass in the text, pass in the regular expression that we need, and use a bit of link to extract the, the values. So we need to return the match.value. Okay, and we should definitely not forget to decorate the function with the uh, Excel function uh, attribute. So once we build this, we can do get words. We can use this as uh, some source data and we can see that we have a list of um, strings. This also supports uh, using uh, async functions. So let's say if we define uh, an async function, um, get text after a delay. So this function is just going to wait for a second and then give us a, um, a hard-coded uh, string. So we're going to return a task of string and we're going to await task dot delay for a thousand milliseconds and return a string. We also need to uh, decorate the function with the correct attribute. Press Control Shift P to build. And you'll see that now when we invoke it, get text after delay, it's going to wait for uh, a second before giving us a string. So I'm going to press enter and then it gives us the, uh, the result here. While it's waiting, the Excel remains uh, fully interactive. So, so it does not block Excel while it's, uh, while it's working. And the last ki kind of function we can, uh, we can define is a function that returns a stream of values. And this is something that you might want to use for, let's say, stock prices, which change over time. Functions that return a stream of values basically return an object that implements uh, an interface called iValueStream. So let's see how that works. So public static i value stream and functions don't don't need to be static and in fact some of them are not if they're uh, if they're using dependency injection to get dependency dependencies from the app class they should not be static but uh, in the simple cases they can just be they can just be static if they don't have any central dependencies so let's define our function that returns a value stream that's going to be uh, get stream of uh, values uh, decorated with the Excel function attribute and we're just going to return a new I don't know let's call the class my stream we don't have this class yet uh, so let's define it so we can do my uh, make a class called my stream this class doesn't implement uh, the iValueStream interface. The easiest way to implement uh, the iValueStream interface is just to derive from uh, ValueStream base. We can use the code fixer to uh, scaffold the necessary functions. Inside the start method, we're going to start providing values. So we're going to use um, task delay uh, here as well. So uh, we're going to make this function uh, async. 
So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go, uh, cycle for, uh, for int i equals 1, i less than 10, i plus plus. We're going to, in each cycle, we're going to wait for a task delay of 1000 milliseconds. And we're going to uh, provide uh, i as the result, or actually a string that contains it. So we can do something like uh, like this, uh, and we should use string interpolation. So I think that should be it. We should get rid of the exception and the stop method. We're not using stop method uh, at the moment. Stop would get invoked when you delete uh, the, the cell from Excel. We don't really care about that, so uh, we're good to go without it. So if we click build project right now, we can go over here and invoke the get stream of values uh, function. And this is what it's, uh, what it's, uh, it's providing us with the stream of values. And we can uh, interact with Excel while it's doing its thing. We're not uh, blocked in any way. So yeah. The really interesting part here is once we are done building our functions, we can uh, publish uh, our functions to a network share or to the cloud, and then other people can download them and use them. Here's how to do that. Once the uh, project is built, we can click Publish. In the feeds, we can select where we want to push. We, can, uh, we, we should specify uh, the author, the description, and some metadata about the package. And then we, uh, we can uh, publish it. Now, this list of uh, feeds, you can add it in the extensions dialog. You go to Manage Sources, add a source, click on the Edit button. And over here, you can uh, give the source a name. You can provide a URL, which can be a network share, a local, um, local folder, or it can be a NuGet repository in the cloud. So I'm going to delete this source, and I'm just going to use the My Packages uh, source over here, which is, which is just a folder on my machine. So let's, do, uh, let's uh, publish it. I'm going to put my name uh, here in the authors. And in the description, I'm going to put some demo functions. After that, I can click Publish Package. The package is published uh, immediately since um, it's, a, it's, my lo it's a local folder on my machine. If we take a look at the contents of this folder, it contains the package we just uh, published. Now, anybody who has uh, this folder added as a source can download um, the package. In this case, this is just a local folder, so nobody would have access. But if we publish to the cloud, everybody who had the URL would be able to download the package. So let's close this, and I'm going to show you what this looks like on a target machine. So to simulate a target machine, I'm just going to get rid of the uh, query storm IDE and just leave the query storm runtime. To get rid of the query storm IDE, I'm going to go to add-ins, call add-ins, Click uh, Go, and then uncheck Query Storm over here. Once I press OK, the Query Storm ID is unloaded, and all, that's, uh, all that remains is the Query Storm runtime. The Query Storm runtime can be installed separately. It's a four megabyte installation. It's completely free. It doesn't have any licensing associated. Uh, and as soon as you download it and install it, you already have access to uh, a set of packages that uh, my team and I have already built. So let's go to Extensions. And actually, let's uh, get rid of this uh, ABC functions over here. So as soon as we get rid of it, uh, that, uh, the function results disappear from here. If we go to Query Storm Extensions, type in ABC, we can find the ABC functions uh, package over here. If we hover over the uh, title, we can see all of the functions that it contains. And we can click the Install button. And as soon as we've uh, installed, the uh, functions are uh, up and running again. There are some other useful functions in the uh, extensions um, catalog. So if we go to uh, Manage Sources, there are two NuGet feeds already predefined. One is NuGet.org, which is used for uh, downloading NuGet packages. And the second one is the Query Storm Extensions feed, which uh, doesn't have NuGet packages, but it has extensions. Technically, extensions are uh, structured the same as NuGet packages, so just a convention, basically. It's not, there's no technical difference between the two. 
And so if you go to Query Storm extensions, you can download several uh, useful extensions that we've already built. I'm just going to demo uh, a few of them uh, for you. I have some of them already installed. So let's, uh, so for example, the Google Translate one, the Windy Query one, the Searchlight one, and the uh, text one. So to demonstrate the query function, I'm just going to close this one, this file, open up the uh, another workbook where I have a demo for it. And here we have two tables. And in this cell, we have the query function. So the query function basically lets you use uh, SQL on, uh, on workbook tables. So if I do, uh, if I start uh, typing windy.query over here, I can do a select from, uh, from the people table. And as soon as I do that, it gives me all of the rows in this, um, in this uh, table. I can also include the headers and I can also tell it to automatically refresh when the input data changes. So that if I change John123 over here to just John, this immediately updates. So over here, I have an example with the, with the join, just to show that this is actual SQL that, uh, that's being executed. Let's get rid of uh, this one. Uh, and also if we change this to, let's say from sales, we can change this to marketing uh, and the results update uh, automatically. The query itself is executed by SQLite engine that's part of the, uh, of the extension. So any SQL that's a, a valid SQL query is going to run just fine over here. One thing I want to mention is we're not limited to just uh, defining functions inside uh, extension packages. We can also define general purpose extensions to Excel. So one of those is uh, an extension called um, Searchlight that uh, I have installed over here. That's this one. Uh, it doesn't, if we hover over it, we'll see that it doesn't have any uh, functions, but it gives us uh, additional functionality inside Excel. So let's say that this is, um, so suppose this is, so suppose this is a large Excel file and we want to navigate it. So let's add some uh, sheets over here. So Searchlight basically helps in the following way. It gives you a shortcut, which you can invoke, which is Control Alt F. And we can start typing over here. So if we want to go to uh, sheet one, we can just start typing uh, and press enter and that's it. If we want to go to uh, sheet three, we can, we can do that. If we want to find uh, a table called uh, people, we can start typing that and, and navigate uh, to here as well. And then we also have an extension for Google Translate. So we can do, uh, we can call uh, Google Translate and say, hey, is this some text? And we can translate this to Spanish, press OK, and it reaches out to the Google Translate API and gives us back the results. This one requires a bit of configuration. So if I go into um, configure extensions over here, I need to edit my, uh, enter my Google API key over here. So the point of this is you can build functions that you can use inside Excel yourself, but you can also build functions that anybody in your company or outside of your company can also use, as long as they have access to, your, uh, to the repository where you keep the uh, extension packages. The QueryStorm runtime is entirely free, so if you make something with QueryStorm, you don't have to worry about anybody having to pay uh, an additional license to, in order to use it. If you want to publish your packages to an Azure artifact server, uh, you can go to the QueryStorm uh, website, go to the documentation page, custom Excel functions, publish fu publishing functions, and here you're going to find, uh, uh, if you scroll down below, publishing to Azure artifacts. I've made a, a short video where the entire process is laid out uh, from uh, creating an Azure Artifacts account, setting up API keys and everything. It's a process that takes just a couple of minutes, so it's fairly easy to set up. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in QueryStorm, go check it out at QueryStorm.com and tell me what you think in the uh, comment section of this video. Thanks a lot and see you next time.